How do you fix The Good Place? The Good Place was a TV show that ran from 2016 to 2020, and it was about philosophy and the meaning of life and a lot of other things that you don't often see uh, shows about. I liked it. I thought it was a great series in a lot of ways. It made philosophy relevant. There were times when its coverage maybe felt more like light flavoring than anything serious, but its major story arcs t uh, touched on some big philosophical concepts, and I, I, I appreciate uh, both the flavoring and it actually getting at some of the more interesting questions in philosophy. And several of the characters had some pretty great story arcs. Um, Eleanor and Chidi uh, were two of the the main characters. I guess Eleanor might be the main character uh, character in a way, uh, to the extent that it really had one. But both of them got a lot of uh, great story arcs, a lot of development. The character of Michael also got uh, got this, um, and some minor characters got some pretty cool arcs as well. There was a lot of good dialogue. Um, there was some fun set design. I guess actually on the dialogue front, in some ways it had a lot of the cute and clever dialogue that um, Buffy is known for. I, I haven't seen a lot of Buffy, but it's well known for just having a certain style of this is how we do dialogue. This is our notions of cute and charming and how we're gonna weave it into uh, our production. Um, and The Good Place had, had that flavor, uh, or at least as far as I, uh, I understand of Buffy's flavoring. Um, but yeah, there was some fun set designs. There was just a good overall arc for the series, which is kind of rare for, uh, for TV. It's hard to have a sustained, um, it's, it's hard to go for four seasons and actually have it work out. Another one of my favorite pieces of fiction Star Trek uh, Deep Space Nine, its first uh, season was pretty awful, uh, and it really took until the second or maybe the third season to actually start to get good. There are reasons for this, um, studio, studio interference, uh, concerns about the legacy of that series, uh, of Star Trek in general, but um, The Good Place was actually good from the first series, and it mostly stayed good throughout. Not entirely consistently, but, but mostly. Um, and I thought that the, uh, the contrasts between the now of the afterlife and the chaos of real life, those were handled, uh, handled pretty interestingly, and they mirror a lot of the ways where, uh, you, you live your life in a very in the moment way and things are busy and messy and you have all these long-term concerns and you're just trying to mostly steer your ship through the details of your life. And then you might have occasions where you step back and rethink everything. And The Good Place kind of did that in, in, in the terms of the, you're always looking at the infinite in the afterlife. You're always looking at, uh, really looking back over your life and, and uh, reasoning about it. Whereas the flashbacks uh, and later return to the mortal uh, mortal coil that uh, it just I, I thought that was a cool contrast, um, and it's not just a this is a neat idea. It really is. We've grabbed onto an existing thing that's part of part of human existence, and uh, and found a way to show it to you in a new light. So that that's good, but it got a few uh, a few things wrong, and probably the thing I'm going to talk about the most is flanderization. Right from the start, some characters were very one-dimensional, and they may as well have been replaced by uh, uh, Kabuki Kuroko with just a sign saying, I am here to help remind you that somebody is here with a one-sentence character description, uh, because you could predict probably about 90% of those characters' dialogue. It, it's always say something about this, something about that. And that is distracting. It's annoying and it's dull. Shouldn't happen. The show dragged on a little bit. Um, you, it probably could have been condensed down into uh, three seasons without a great loss. Uh, would be interesting to imagine what kind of what those edits would have looked like. It wasn't too bad at four, but 
it, it did drag on. There were episodes where very little changed, even though they had built up the expectation of larger things changing, but maybe forgivable. Also, one of the weird things about adopting that kind of Buffy style, um, snarky, snarky QT dialogue as, as their center is that everything gets dragged towards the camera for some kind of interpersonal seventh graders arguing with each other drama explosion. Uh, this kind of, well, you know what? Guess what I did two months ago. Let me explain. Uh, and oh, it's so clever. Like that kind of thing. Um, characters don't keep things under their vest. Uh, any details are eventually exposed. Um, and it's a very camera centric, uh, reality, which you can do in, in TV. It's not the, it's not unexpected because, uh, maybe you, you have that risk as an author. If you don't expose everything to the camera, then people won't pick up on it and people will nag and wonder and, uh, just like what's going on behind the scenes. I have to know. So you show them everything, but I, I think that's bad writing. Maybe some people like that. The the uh, the other major thing that I find disappointing in the show is that it treats evil as both real and performative, when in reality it's incoherent, and it uh, at other times it digs into the well. Uh, the the right way to show two contrasting sides is to have one be largely an inversion of the other. So like, uh, you, you saw a lot of this in children's uh, shows, uh, children's cartoons in the, in the 80s, where you had Skeletor saying, I had a nice day, that's terrible. It's like, come on, that's, it, it just really annoying and stupid writing there. That's, that's, but that's part of the world that they built. Um, in reality, evil is both incoherent and talking about evil is a childish way to retreat from actually understanding what's going on in other people's heads. Um, and that, in reality, if, if somebody does something bad, uh, like if, if somebody does something and we all, all of society judges it to be bad, or most of society, they didn't do it to be evil. They're not cackling and enjoying pissing other people off. Sometimes they are. But usually there's a deeper reason, and you can go into it. You can try and understand people. Uh, you can you see that all these things that are united under the the name evil actually have very little to do with each other. And so if you call somebody evil, you you don't you you've gained nothing in terms of understanding them, what they're likely to do. Even if you have to oppose them, just why not? say like extremely narcissistic or uncaring of the troubles of others or uh, lacks a moral center or I mean you can add all these things together and you actually start to understand somebody or you can just call them evil uh, and so I, I think the term evil is best abandoned in public discourse but it's much more annoying when you also then have this notion of good is a very solid thing and evil is just the literal cartoon inversion of that and so I, I wouldn't have done uh, I wouldn't have gone there with the series but let's zoom in a little bit on the the, the flanderization that happened right from the start the one-dimensional characters and to do this we're primarily going to talk about two characters and those are Tahini and Jason and they are two of the other kind of main six characters, I would say, like the four humans and uh, Janet and Michael. Those are the probably the six main characters in the series. Um, but Tahini and Jason are a mess. And I don't mean that in a good, uh, good way. I mean, they're badly written and need desperately need revision. There's very, very little to Jason apart from him being very stupid. Most of his dialogue is essentially saying, I am stupid and misunderstanding things. And it might be fun to talk about how this eventually comes to circle back to the monk thing and certain notions of anatman or stoicism, of not 
not getting attached with uh, detail, uh, too many of the details of the world or expectations. But the, sh the show never went there. Uh, didn't that would have been an interesting idea. C could have gone a number of ways with it. But no, he's uh, it's just unexplored. And he maybe he, he was just there for story dialogue reasons to stop things from ever getting too serious because they could always stick another uh, ooh, Jason is stupid type jokes. I could almost see it in the, like the broad outlines of the sketch for an episode. Have all these interesting things happen and things are getting too tense and then Jason says something stupid, fill this in later. But that's all there really is to Jason. And uh, he's just irritating. So how would you fix it? Well, you would either revamp Jason deeply, or I would just suggest a complete replacement. Get rid of that character entirely. If you need humor, maybe drop in an otaku, or maybe somebody who's really depressed if you want dark humor. Um, you could have somebody who had really hoped not to keep on existing and keeps on trying to kill themselves in the afterlife. Maybe a little dark, it might be a little hard for it to easily fit onto TV, but um, I just find something better. I just think that the basic character concept of Jason is empty. It's a stupid throwaway joke that gets stretched over four seasons. Uh, I would just remove it. Tahini was a little bit better than Jason, but not much. Like her actress, uh, she's also dim and shallow. But here the character is carrying a different sign. And unlike Jason, she has a character arc. But it's predictable and trite. Uh, but somehow the show tries to pretend that it's meaningful. I don't think the character can be salvaged because all she is is snobbery and uh, self-centeredness uh, to, to a degree that you generally don't meet people in real life that are like that at all. Uh, it's unbelievable. It's, uh, it's dull. Again, it's one of those things where you could imagine uh, the the broad strokes of an outline uh, or broad strokes of an episode being, and then they're trying to uh, trying to convince uh, Michael to do this or that. And then Tahini comes in and name drops some things about celebrities and shows that she's self centered. It's like never she never contributes meaningfully to the plot, uh, but she's always there. So again, you could remove her or you could tone her down maybe to about 20% of that. Like you could still have an arrogant self-centered character. That, that's fine, could be interesting, but there needs to be something more than that. And it shouldn't be like most of her dialogue being showing off that singular uh, character trait. Um, so she, she was a mess. I would remove her or, or deeply change her. And I, feel, I find it really strange that they flubbed those two characters so badly. I mean, the, uh, when they had some background characters like Vicky and Simone, uh, who had much better development and were far, far more interesting. Maybe different writers made uh, different characters. Uh, there, there were a few background characters that were also like an annoyingly present but empty. Uh, there, there was a character like right near the end of, uh, right near the end of the show. Can't remember his name, but his entire thing is he is absolutely uh, full of himself and can never admit wrongs. So he's actually kind of a lot like Tahini, uh, but throughout the entire show, uh, well, I mean, he, I think he might have only been in the last season. He, he played a. Uh, he wasn't there for very long, but like uh, like Tahini, uh, he he was just carrying that sign that every line of dialogue basically has to be showing off that singular character trait. Um, but Vicky and Simone, they were both great. They were interesting characters, and Vicky wasn't even supposed to be human, um, but she she was a fascinating character. Now, it helped that Vicky was played by, I mean, Simone also, both of them were played by fantastic actresses uh, who have done a lot of interesting things, but um, but they, they were also very well written. They were not one-dimensional. They were not uh, annoying. Um, 
So, so really, in order to fix the good place, I, I guess I would edit it down to three seasons. I would remove Tahini and Jason and replace them with more interesting characters. Um, and, and maybe just do a little bit of tweaking of the dialogue to make it so that uh, not everything is about interpersonal, showing off -y, argue -y, buff Buffy-type stuff. Like, it's okay to have some of that. And clearly it worked for Buffy. Just tone it down a bit. Um, but, but really, the, the primary problem with The Good Place, uh, it comes down to Tahini and Jason. So those are my thoughts about The Good Place. I know that it's not a particularly recent show, but it's been on my mind because it's one of those shows that I sometimes go back and watch clips of on YouTube. And it's also a show that I just it stuck in my head in terms of that's interesting. It's done some things that fiction rarely does. Uh, sometimes you, you find uh, really good science uh, sci-fi that deals with issues like this. Um, Greg uh, Egan has done uh, some great, uh, really hard sci-fi. Um, I appreciate that, uh, but but you don't often see this stuff making it to the mainstream TV. And the Good Place managed that, and I'm wondering what what would it look like to have another uh, a next uh, or a new generation of TV shows that are exploring some of those topics? Do you need the afterlife uh, theming, or are there ways to do it without uh, without that? Um, I think yeah. Uh, I I think that there there are probably ways to do it, but it's nice to see. Uh, the groundbreaking happened that the, uh, that the uh, good place gave us. Um, anyhow, those are my thoughts. Uh, if you have thoughts and want to leave comments, I might reply. Bye-bye. Um,